And three, two, one, boom. And we're back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This episode brought to you by Zen Real Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and or accessories. We also got a hoodie at zenrealclothingco.com. Use code SGPODCAST for 20% off select items. Okay, so this morning was the um, launch abort mission or the abortion, the abort mission <laughs> okay. via SpaceX. Yeah. So um, basically, I right, want to go with a rundown of like what it was, Vish. So before they could do a manned mission uh, using SpaceX rockets, they have to do one uh, launch abort. No, no, no. Like, uh, yeah, launch abort test. So like if something does happen and um, what is the scenario to uh, save the crews that are on that would be on the ship. So basically it was like a dry run of um, a catastrophe. Yeah. So like if something bad happened, we're going to do like a test run and see what we would do to solve this problem. Yeah. Basically, essentially. Uh, yeah. Like everything is whatever has been uh, preset. This is what the same thing that they'll be in. If anything does go wrong, these are the the, the precautions that they this would, would be this would be the, the process that it would yeah, go through. Process, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but they had two options in this. Uh, so the two options were doing uh, you can do it in a simulation versus mm-hmm. an actual test, like an actual like in like VR simulation or like a real like no like a simulation like in, in a program. Oh, okay, 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 cool. Uh, you can run the test of this simulation in a program that is acceptable under NASA's thing, which is what is Boeing going to do. Boeing does not want to do a physical test. Boeing 747? No, 747? like Boeing as the company that makes uh, things. So they also make rockets. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, but so... is it the same thing, Boeing 747? No, Boeing 747 is a... a type of plane? Or it's like Airbus or something. Some of them. Okay, okay. It's like that's mm. the name. Yeah, you're mixing two things. You're, you're it's my, Boeing uh, as a company. Guys, yeah, so Boeing is no just idea. like a company. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then uh, so SpaceX decided to do the actual physical test of it. And I believe NASA did the same thing, kind of somewhat recently, but I wasn't paying attention about that when that was happening. Uh, so yeah, so they did a physical test, and that happened. They've been waiting. They wanted to do it in, on Saturday. Uh, and today is Sunday that we're recording this. Uh, but the weather conditions, it's all dependent upon what the weather conditions. So even like today, it was delayed a couple hours till the, the weather hit the right thing that they wanted. Yeah, it, That's interesting, though, because it's like you have to wait for these perfect circumstances. Yeah. But if a disaster hit, you never know when the perfect circumstance would be, right? No, 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 no. The weather is always going to be the same thing. Oh, okay, okay, because it's about launch. Yeah. Oh, I understand, yeah. I understand. Oh, interesting, all right. Yeah, weather so will was, always be okay. the same. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. um, you wouldn't launch the rocket on a bad day. Yeah, yeah, they, okay, they, okay. they've true, had true, times true, true, true. where, you know, normal, like even just a normal, not a person mission, just they would have to cancel the launch because it just the weather was bad. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, all right, so what's the difference between like a regular rocket and a SpaceX rocket? Like what? Well, what is what is SpaceX so um, important for? Like with their as a company, this is it's a private company, right? That's doing space missions. No, no, but but I mean, like, what is what is their like uh, flagship thing? Those like r- reverse thrusting rockets or something? Well, yeah, but they weren't doing it for this. The... No, no, no. But I'm saying like oh, that's why so... SpaceX is so important. Yeah. So what what SpaceX like, is, does is makes the space flight cheaper because of their reusable rockets. So the, and and that's why it was established by Elon Musk because his he's like why do I keep why do we keep reusing yeah um, oh no not reusing he wants to reuse them why do we keep destroying what we built and that's what makes it so expensive because like every time you got to I was watching track, right? yeah I was watching there's uh, you can I think you can find it on YouTube but it's also mm-hmm. on Disney Plus like on National Geographic mm-hmm. they have one uh, sp- uh, I think the title is SpaceX to Mars or something like that okay and basically in order. Uh, so when NASA was doing these things, we were just doing like, like, like the moon was a long time ago. But a lot of the missions to for NASA was doing was just to low orbit Earth, right? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. for releasing satellites or connecting to the um, space center. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in order for us to go to Mars, we would eventually need to figure out how to reuse rockets. Like it was, so if you want to go to Mars, you, this needs to happen. 
Okay, so he's he's pushing. So basically, the mission for SpaceX is to get to Mars, right? That's like seems oh, really? like eh? I believe that's what he has set up to design. Like, interesting. That's what it is. So like you, in order for that to even happen, you need to be able to reuse rockets because they would need to come back off of um, Mars or come back to Earth, like that, that kind of stuff that needs to happen. So you need to be able to reuse them. So you need to be able to like refuel it and then take off again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So this had this it was just because when SpaceX started, they didn't have. Uh, um the reusable rockets yet like when they first started okay but but that's what but that's the, what's making their their, their mission either. is now yeah like many years ago their mission they started uh, they decided it was to go to mars and it explains it a lot in that in the in that video um, okay about like uh, they needed to do all this and all the failures they had but then eventually started to get the success that they needed for the reusable rockets so the the primary objective of spacex is to off world yes being a multiplanetary species interesting and that is a this is a, a private company it's not like a nasa or something see all right so what i f what i find super interesting about um uh, elon musk mm -hmm. is that he's developing all these things that are just for the common good of uh mankind yeah right humankind uh, hashtag inclusive <laughs> so okay. uh so what what i find like fascinating is that like he in his joe rogan podcast he understands that as a species we can't collectively uh, uh protections uh so he he can't effectively protect oh sorry sorry sorry. <laughs> i was thinking about the dog uh he he can't we can't effectively agree upon something yeah uh, as a species we need to be kind of like herded or controlled mm -hmm. and they've been doing this throughout time right like religious organizations like government organizations like you gotta take a select few of people yeah and like they're going to govern and dictate what it is the larger body is going to do mm -hmm. right like it's just inevitable yeah, like yeah, too yeah, many people yeah. you need to do this right yeah so like him looking from a like a um, altruistic perspective he's looking at like of course, it's going to make money, but he's like, if we can do certain things to affect ourselves positively and, like, protect our species in terms of, like, no, like, global warming. Mm -hmm. That's why he has, like, the uh, electric cars. And then, okay, well, we need to off-world our species. Mm -hmm. like, he seems like a pioneer in terms of, um, like, protecting humankind. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, where, where yeah are we the gonna future go next? of humankind. The future of humankind. And also, mm -hmm. like, with... Um, Oh, what was that other thing that he does? A uh, Neuralink? So he's like, okay. He's like, yeah, Neuralink, well, there's OpenAI. There's so many different things that he's in that uh, um, that will affect us eventually in the future. Right, totally. Like, like, so Neuralink, it's like, it, it's like connecting um, computers to our brains. Brains, yeah. Which is like the, <laughs> the inevitable next step. Because we're already cyborgs. Like, I like the way he put that. Yeah. We don't realize that we're cyborgs, but we use our phones for everything. Yeah. You know? Like, if you, if you actually look at, like, the utility of a human being, technology is a big part of that. Yeah. And that's what makes us cyborgs. Yeah. You know, half human, half machine. Yeah. So now yeah. it's just inevitable to be more, like, mixed into it, into our bionics, into our biology or whatever. Yeah, totally. totally. It, it's sort of like breathing machines, right? Like if, if you... Right. Yeah. Well, like yeah, the, the, sometimes they add these these pacers or something. Stents. Yeah, yeah, yeah stents. Yeah. And these are these are things Technology. we're technically already yeah. doing, yeah. But now no, we haven't touched the brain yet. That's an... it, totally. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So it, it got me thinking, you know, like, so I watched this, um, well, we were watching the mini documentary on the pyramids mm -hmm. and how... Um, theoretic, like it seems so logical watching that thing, but I mean, like, how much of that is like me not understanding how science really works, right? right. But uh, what they're proposing is that the pyramid was actually a power plant mm -hmm. for generating electricity, right. right? And it makes complete sense because it's like, well, one of the things they're like, we've never seen fire in if they're so primitive, the Egyptians, like, we didn't see fire being used in like their hieroglyphics, or like, we don't see soot. Mm -hmm, anywhere mm -hmm. so it's like they must have used an alternate power right, source right? right so so one of the people that was a big proponent of uh wireless electricity was nikola tesla mm -hmm. so he believed that you can transmit energy like electricity without the use of power lines right but it was edison who like 
through his like marketing and like his his like business dealings you know he he wanted his technology to win yeah you know which is like the case for everything yeah right? i think even even there was like a line from elon musk that said this like he uh, uh like elon Musk or tesla was good but uh in order to be successful you need to do what um what was his name again the guy that uh, did Edison? The, yeah <laughs> what steal ideas and do all that stuff well right? he didn't really steal ideas i think he did have his own things but he did it in a way that people might find like kind of like uh bad or something but manipulative. It was manipulative but like it you kind of need to do that in order to be successful in this in order to make your thing work right totally yeah, yeah. It, it's it all comes down to commerce right yeah. business yeah. right making money yeah so uh although nikola tesla had um like altruistic ideas but i don't think have the yeah business yeah and that's what you to need to it. and i feel like that's what elon musk is that's doing. what i'm saying that totally totally so like i think about. elon musk because the if you listen to him you're like oh you're running on a different level <laughs> yeah. than all of us like you're yeah. seeing some like code in the matrix very much <laughs> you know but but it makes sense like like for example like if you didn't so he believes he's in a simulation right um his simulation thing is not as outlandish as we're all thinking like oh this is like like how i'm like oh my life's a video game i'm in the simulation yeah, and, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. he actually like his what was the thing like if inevitably we're going to achieve a simulation state if not then what was the purpose of living because like yeah i mean then no that means we just we end somewhere that's what that means yeah if, if, we, don't, if we don't hit a simulation yeah then our species will end at some point yeah Right, because like there's nothing to like and what is a simulation if not like life that propagates other life right Al almost like yeah, yeah gods yeah right um so anyways so if you look at it from that perspective like he's he's mm -hmm. looking at the world in a way that mm -hmm. we're not all seeing and he's like hacking the system yeah right he's not breaking the rules but he's hacking the rules so like what do you do is like you play within the rules, but you don't mm -hmm. break the rules. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the rules. If you listen, uh, if you read, um, um, what's his name? That guy, Snowden. Yeah. Snowden's book on um, like hacking. Mm -hmm. He's like a hacker actually knows more about the rules than the people that put them in yeah. place yeah. because the hacker needs to understand how the rules work in order to break the rules. Yeah. So, for example, he wasn't allowed to ship a flamethrower, so he called it not a flamethrower. Yeah. Right. It's like, well, technically. It's not a flamethrower, yeah. but like we're we're all looking at it like how can this be legal? But you're hacking the rules, you know. Yeah. So I think what Elon Musk is seeing is like we need an altruistic, which I've been agreeing with for a long time. Mm. Like you need to herd the masses. Like everything's run off business. Yeah, like right? like think about it. Like like a lot of his things. Like for instance, like that uh, the big rocket launch, um, the Falcon Heavy launch. Mm -hmm. Like normally it was just done with like a concrete uh, brick or a concrete like a oh, huge concrete block mm -hmm. as the payload mm -hmm. but they put a tesla car in there so like this is a way to get like more enthusiastic about space stuff or you know what so, i mean yeah, totally so like there's like yeah, things yeah. like he's, he's doing hacking. that he's understanding i mean i think we can get that too like with his twitter with the totally. kind of things he's tweeting like that well, sort of well, stuff well, feels like what i think he <laughs> is is not only a genius inventor but a genius marketer yeah. at the end yeah. of the day because like yeah. like i i put marketing down to hacking the human reward system because mm -hmm. that's all you're doing right yeah. like as a marketer like professionally me it's like all i'm trying to do is like how do i get you to do what i want you to do yeah but i want you to think it's your idea yeah, yeah. right you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. you gotta want to buy the product i'm just gonna put everything in place to make your re human reward system think I should buy this product right which is what he's doing <laughs> everything he's doing is like we're talking about him it's yeah. so interesting yeah. right so like he understands the rules of the game but he's an also like an altruist yeah right so like he wants to he wants to like create he's talking about this on joe rogan his next thing he hasn't like fully developed it yet but he alluded to it mm -hmm. is like an ac system that like it knows when you're coming home so it turns itself on 20 minutes before and then it knows when you leave, so it turns itself off. Whereas we run AC systems all the time. Yeah. So if you can, if you can create a, like a intelligence system that understands patterns, then you can regulate energy to turn on and turn off accordingly. So you're saving 
You're not wasting energy in the mm -hmm. long run. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's an altruistic thing. But he's like, how do I do it? I got to sell it to you, right? Yeah. Like, just like Tesla, Nikola, like not the car, but like Nikola Tesla had a great idea, but he wasn't a good marketer. Mm -hmm. I think Elon Musk is a great inventor, but he understands he needs to also be a good marketer. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So speaking of which, so the whole premise of the... Um, the pyramids is that the the obelisks are receivers for the wireless electricity so like the the giant pyramid is actually powering a large majority of the world mm -hmm. so according to its placement it's shooting electricity throughout the air safely yeah because nikola tesla said he proved that this can be done mm -hmm. but i think the egyptians just capitalized on it and then they were spreading that energy throughout the world via obelisks. That's why you can find obelisks around the world. Right. Right. Makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. But the only other thing is like in the documentary we were watching, it's like, they're like, oh, if only we could harness this for the good of humankind. And you were saying like, what do you, like, why is everyone talking about the good of humankind? Obviously they charged for this. <laughs> you know, it totally makes sense, right? Yeah. Like why, why would the Egyptians, they're the most power, they're the, one of the largest races at the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you become large as a race? Commerce. Right. You, had to, you had to have traded something. You know what I mean? Like India was trading spices, um, China noodles. I don't really know. <laughs> but, like, but like Egyptians, what were they trading? Yeah. Electricity. Right. That makes complete sense. Why were they most the most dominant civilization at the time? What resource did they have to gift the world? Mm -hmm. Like, if, all right, so like even looking like in contemporary times, how, why is America the most dominant um the most dominant civilization right now mm -hmm. like city right or like country yeah, yeah. it's because they're trading on the world platform in terms of like all of our consumer goods come from there yeah so if we're all buying mm -hmm. american made products or like ideas then that's going to push you at the top of the heap in terms of like world world power See right. what I'm saying? Yeah. But now now there's a shift because now we're all buying our stuff from China. So now China's getting higher and higher. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's right. all commerce. It's, yeah. Or like Saudi Arabia, why are they so rich? Because of oil. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so what did the Egyptians do mm -hmm. that made them so powerful economically? They had to have been trading energy. Right. It, just, it makes logical sense. Mm -hmm. But then it makes me feel stupid because I have this like picture, <laughs> the display picture of me in front of the pyramid. And it's like, why are you posing in front of the power plant? You know, it's like. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's all. Well, yeah, we tend to forget what it was. And, then... and we like glorify it. We're yeah. like, oh, this was a tomb of like blah, blah, blah. And it's like having been inside the pyramid mm -hmm. and then watching that documentary, it totally makes sense. Because like it's not built like a regular tomb. Mm -hmm. Like when we're they're like, okay, this is the queen's tomb. And you're like, you look at it, you're like, okay, there's like inscriptions on the wall. There's like carvings. There's an obvious small enough tomb. Right. This makes complete sense. But then like you go inside the Great Pyramid and there's nothing inside. Mm -hmm. So it's like if this was just like a power plant, that could totally make sense. Because you just need like people to be able to walk through and like regulate stuff. Like, oh, is the electricity doing well? All right, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they say it's older than what we think, right? That's because uh, it's like they, there's no depictions of anything of them making it. Yeah, it's just totally, totally, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's. But theoretically, like humans, maybe 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 it was originally a power plant, but then later on people turned it into a tomb. Maybe yeah. You know, that could have been mm -hmm. that because they didn't know what to do with it. They're like, right. oh, what is this thing? And they just came upon it. So they're like, let's just say it's a tomb. So maybe it was a tomb later on. Right. You know? Right. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Right. The usage of it changed. Yeah, totally. Because mm -hmm. they couldn't figure out, like, why Why did this giant structure be here? Mm. You know? Uh, even, okay, so the, the ones that they say are tombs, are they younger in age? No, they're all built around the same time. Oh. Allegedly. Like... Oh, the, right. The, the Again, that is compared it. to... Right. If, if the... I'm thinking that if the thing is... If the big pyramids... Are the power plants and they're much much older than the other ones then it would make sense that they would copy that thinking that it's a tomb and then make the tombs oh, based on that, that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah so they came upon it and they're like oh this must have been a burial ground yeah or something and then they start to make their own look same, same something similar but they 
if the age of it is different or younger right, right, than right. the actual big pyramids. But, but if you're listening to this and you're like, well, what do you mean they came upon it? So another theory, highly probable theory, is that um, we've been through global catastrophes before mm -hmm. and it's wiped out like the majority of all of humankind. Yeah. And then the only people that were able to like repopulate the earth because they could live off the land were hunter gatherers. Right. So like if so like, let's say there's an advanced civilization because all all religions talk about like the um not all religions, all um ancient things, mm -hmm, I don't know, like mm -hmm. sects. <laughs> uh they they talk about like uh the Atlantis, you know right like these ancient civilizations the sumerians they talk about all these like ancient civilizations that came before what we know today mm -hmm. like there's even like the gold age the bronze age the silver age you know and like greek history yeah so it's like how do we know that we didn't just like each age was just us being wiped out and restarting mm -hmm. you know yeah makes logical sense but yeah so like if a hunter gatherer came upon that and they're like oh it must be a tomb Mm -hmm. So they started building smaller tombs to mirror that giant pyramid. Or like he didn't know, he just like he just thought of an answer because you know those people that make make up things. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh yeah, I think I know it's a tomb. Yeah, we should make all tombs like this. And <laughs> totally, totally, totally. And and that's um, actually this is going to be the original topic for this, but like the like the whole look into it thing. Yeah. So like we as a species, we can't know everything. Yeah, you know, so like we rely on experts, right? Like you can't study engineering plus, plus marketing plus business plus you know like you can't yeah, yeah. add all this together. Yeah. So you're gonna come to another person who supposedly knows about it, you know. Like uh, think about going to the dentist, right? Mm -hmm. um, you you're gonna go to a hygienist who's mm -hmm. gonna clean your teeth. You don't know how to clean your own teeth. You're gonna go to them as an expert. Yeah, right. But what does that mean? We have to put our faith in someone else that yeah. they know what they're doing, yeah. right? So, like throughout history, like you were saying, like the guys just like yeah, it's a tomb, you know. It's yeah. like we're gonna go to that leader and be like, "What is this?" And he doesn't want to lose his spot. Be like, "I don't know." Mm. So he's just like, "That's a tomb," right? Yeah, you know. That's what I think. So I think a lot of, but then you're like open to the pitfalls of like, you know, mm -hmm. what's real and what's not real. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we're just allegedly this could be this. I mean, like we, it's funny that uh, that you know, you're like looking into the past and I'm seeing into the future. Like of this, yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> you're yeah, doing the total true, opposite. True, true. Yeah, but yeah. maybe there's something to be learned from the past to be added to the future. What what I think is that there's um there's human characteristics that transcend time, space and time, <laughs> space and time. No, no, for real, for real, for real though. Think, think about it. Think about it. We all rely on beliefs. Mm -hmm. right because life is just a story we tell ourselves mm -hmm. so like we create religious systems all the time yeah you know right and if you look at like ancient ancient histories the temples mm -hmm. and you look at today we're we're still putting our faith in something else something right. higher than us yeah you know even if you're like i don't believe in god you still put your your faith in like nature mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you you believe that there's something bigger because that's an innate human characteristic Right. You know, uh, another innate human characteristic is um, technology. So them creating a power plant to power their societies yeah. makes complete sense. Right. Like we're always going to look for innovation as a species, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So like, I think in looking at the past and the future, it, you're looking at the same thing because you're looking at humans. Right. Like anthropologically, how do humans operate? Right, and we will probably do similar things. Like, yeah. yeah, totally. So that's why it's not out of the realm of possible. So like when when I was seeing all those things about like, oh, aliens came down and they built the pyramids, blah, blah. I was like, that makes no sense. Like maybe if that was true, that's cool. But like when seeing this power plant thing, I was like, this makes way more sense than anything I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, I don't think they would put, maybe they would put a lot of money into a tomb because that's the story that I was sold when I went there. They're like, oh, it's a yeah, tomb. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, that makes sense, you know? us as species we're just trying to show like we have a bigger car than the other person right mm -hmm. but like this makes even more sense in that like why would they not look for alternate power sources other than fire right like how primitive were they like you're in a big yeah you're in a big city like you would have to i think because they were big cities be, right yeah. so what yeah. so the it, the whole city of egypt was powered by fire mm -hmm. that makes no sense right 
That's true. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm and like, and even like how, so it's like, how did it generate power? It was hydropower. So there was like a water system underneath the pyramid because of the Nile River. Yeah. Like a, a, so that date back, so I believe that date, then that adds to the, the timeline being. Um, oh, much older. Much yeah, older. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. So like, so that's a great example too. It's like, okay, they're using hydropower. We use hydropower, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And like the elements that, with, if you look in the documentary, the elements that they make out of the pyramid are the same things that they make out of like wiring that passes electricity. So it's like, right. yeah, we're just re redoing, which is different inventions, but we're mm -hmm. doing the same thing, right? Even like the top of the pyramid being gold, and gold's the primary conductor for passing electricity. Right. Right? Because like gold insulated things, we have gold in our wires, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, if the top was gold, then maybe they were shooting out the energy wirelessly through the top mm. to the obelisks. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Makes, makes complete sense. Yeah, the, the ex ex uh, examples they were giving were pretty good. Yeah, because yeah, how, how, like, it makes no sense to me. Like, how could you power in a giant city off of fire? Yeah. How much wood did you have to burn? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Wouldn't you have, like, wiped out a giant right. forest? Right. You know? Yeah, I mean, also, like, like yeah, that's something that would be interesting to learn more about. If they should, uh, they should never, like, end... Um, like the the just like like think that we've already solved everything right like that's the thing that i think that's the issue here too is like oh, oh yeah, like, yeah like i think we're i think we know what the pyramids are for and then like kind of like stop right like, right, right, right 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 so, totally like maybe these sort of things kind of help like maybe we should look back into it again and uh yeah totally yeah but see no the problem though is like you this. have you have systems in place like um you have like uh archaeologists and now they've jumped to greece because it's like oh no actually what we tell you is completely wrong <laughs> you know you're like ah oh, damn so it's really worthless yeah you know but it, it yeah that's the it shouldn't be like that but anyway that's sometimes that happens because nobody wants to lose their job right yeah totally totally so like all right so uh, another another good example of like to circle back to spacex like another good example of like humans recurring the same thing it's like Mm -hmm. Elon Musk would just be like a genius inventor during those times as well. Yeah. Right? Like who who's the one who built the pyramid? Mm -hmm. You must have had some crazy dude that was like, I bet you we could make it huge. Right. You know, like <laughs> yeah. just like Elon Musk. Mm. And yeah. who knows? Like, cause like so another thing I saw was that a theory is that they see pyramids on Mars, right? And if we are able to off world who knows if Mars used to be like a hospitable planet, mm -hmm. you know, like what, what freaked me out was like um, the Chernobyl thing when they couldn't, mm -hmm. they couldn't figure out how to shut off the radioactive stuff. Right. Right. So what if Mars is civilization, they were using radioactive, this is total speculation and theory, but like if they were using like right. um, radiation too, and then a, a disaster happened just like mm -hmm. Chernobyl mm -hmm. and then they couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. So now right. the entire planet's screwed. Right, because right? they said like the the disaster will last like five thousand years or five hundred thousand years, something like that. Mm -hmm. So maybe at this point in time, we're seeing Mars as it's radioactive and you know bad, or that it. I mean, yeah, or, or it's like it's already passed, and now the passed, Earth yeah. doesn't know how to the Mars doesn't know how to like fix itself. Well, maybe true. Like it, it makes complete because if we can, if we can come up with so like when this was like proposed in the beginning, mm -hmm. we didn't, we didn't have SpaceX's ability to like reuse rockets, right, or reverse thrust, right. Yeah. So to us, it was like, no, why would there be another? We can't even leave this planet. Like, why would there be another mm -hmm. thing? But in like less than two hundred years, yeah. Look how far we've come. Right. It's only been two hundred years. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. World War One. To now, like when did the first plane get invented? Mm -hmm. Like less than two hundred years. I think so. Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. imagine in a thousand years, like what are we gonna have? Like <laughs> the rate of change is so high. So it, now it seems logical that you could have an off-world species on there. So mm -hmm. if there are pyramids on Mars, maybe the Egyptians figured out how to off-world as well, and they're like, oh, let's let's like share our energy with mars so they create a pyramid there as a power plant as well right you know what i'm saying it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, it's all starting to make sense mm. yeah right yeah. looking at our own trajectory of where we're going 
Yeah, true. Yeah. Right? Because, like, like let, let's say we go to space, we use SpaceX, we go to Mars, and then they start terraforming, mm -hmm. right? Well, what are they going to use as an energy source? Power plants. They're going to create their own energy systems. Yeah, they'll have to find ways, exactly, yeah, more um, rudimentary ways. In the beginning. In the beginning, yeah. Right? But so then, so then if you look at it, that's what I'm saying. It's like, when you're like, oh, I'm looking at the past, you're looking at the future, it's like, but they're the same thing. Yeah. Humans are doing the same. No, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Really. Like you, there's something to be learned from both. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, fascinating. Yeah. Humans are, generally, yeah, it's you know, very fascinating. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. And it's not like totally out of the realm of possibility, too, because it's like, you could be like, oh, you guys are like crazy. But like, okay, so so if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, you guys are nuts, like these are some outlandish theories, it's like, but did you even know about Neuralink? Because I remember I was at work and I was like, I was saying like, yeah, like we're going to connect um, like technology to our human system, our spines, mm -hmm. you know, and they thought I was like nuts. They were like, oh, that's kind of weird. I was like, no, no, there's a company, Neuralink, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then they were like, wait, what? So I'm like, if you don't actually know what's going on technological wise, yeah like it seems far-fetched mm -hmm. you know yeah remember that time I, I went to montana and like we were like oh yeah i'm from canada and like they they honestly thought we lived in igloos here <laughs> and i was like are you what like you know what i mean so it's like right there right, are different right. yeah it's like the yeah. vocal minority mm -hmm. majority sort uh was it vocal minority minority yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. or no, I guess they're the majority because like most people don't know what's going on. That, but again, that's why you need to be herded, right? So these people in Montana that thought Canadians lived in igloos, it's like, yeah, you just need to be herded, bro. Right. You shouldn't. You shouldn't participate in our. Mm. Like back then, right? They there was like um, some stipulations to be a voter. You had to have a certain amount of land. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Before. Yeah. But that wasn't because of like ownership or anything like that. It's just like if you had land, it meant you were smart. Mm. You knew how to use money because it's like, why would we be voting on things that make no? It's sort of like when people are like the climate change thing, and it's like, be that's actually not going to contribute anything. Like you taking your bike to work is not going to do anything. Right. Like the fundamental flaw is that Canada provides two percent of the global climate mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. So it's like, so what is our two percent? Even if we reverse that, sixty percent is coming from like China and India. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like Yeah. It's like half information. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, then there's see but yeah, like But you the, can't know everything. Yeah. So it's like yeah. the person in Montana, they probably know like a lot about skiing. <laughs> or something. No. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, because it was, it yeah, was, no, no, it no, was yeah, in yeah. a skiing place that I was like staying. Like what's the best condition to go out there? <laughs> and ski. Sorry. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, I don't know that stuff. Like, yeah. is today a good day to go skiing? I don't yeah, know. yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Not to like harp on them, but I mean, like, that's literally what they did. Like, they, they were like, um, I, I, I called them snowmads. <laughs> okay. So like, they would, they'd follow the snow. Okay. So, oh, like, oh, right. That's why I call them snowmads. Like, they're nomads, but for the snow. So like, what a lot of people will do is they'd like. Uh, it was in Jackson Hole. So, mm. like, when it's when it's summertime, they would fly to a different part of the country that had snow. Right. And they'd work there because they worked in, like, chalets. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, like, yeah. their whole job was to snowboard <laughs> okay. or ski. Mm. So, like, it makes sense. Like, yeah, you know a lot about snowboarding and skiing, but, like, you don't know anything about SpaceX. You're like, oh, what's Elon Musk doing again? He's crazy. You know what I mean? Like, right. that's, that's your perspective. But it's like, no, he's pushing us forward. And I think that's what Elon Musk knows. He's like... We need to herd everyone. Yeah. yeah what, oh, not just Elon Musk, but like, I think the 1% elite, they know this. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't harp on them. Yeah, no. You know? Right. Yeah. The, I mean, yeah, there's, there's always the good ones. Sometimes there's the bad ones too. But like, yeah, so, but I don't even know if it's like good or bad. I wonder if yeah, it's just like true. people are just pushing for their agenda. Like Elon Musk, is he good? sure but is he bad yes as well mm -hmm. you know it's like it's like you you just have a bunch of people that are like pushing their own agendas mm -hmm. and the one that's gonna win it's like history right yeah history is written by the winner so like colonial we watch pocahontas <laughs> and like man the colonials are so bad you know right but like we view ourselves as good because 
we live here. But now. We also wouldn't be here we without all that. Yeah, totally, totally. Like you know, like, it's like the, sometimes something's just ha like they have to have happened. Like yeah, to sure, get to yeah, this yeah, result. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Everything like happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Or has like everything's got like a positive and negative, I guess. But, like, I think I think that's why they say like. Mm -hmm. it was all meant to be here yeah i don't think when like ancient spiritual people say like it was meant to be i don't think what they're trying to say is like i think they're talking about like fate and like because yeah. what is fate if not like cause and effect mm -hmm. action reaction right right like like you were like oh without that we wouldn't be here it's like yeah without that cause we wouldn't have this effect without mm -hmm. that action we didn't have this reaction mm -hmm. yeah so that's why that's why things are the way they are, <laughs> right. because they're the way they are. Yeah. 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 I think I think we're headed for a really cool world. Yeah, I'm excited for when we get to Mars. It'll be very exciting to see. Yeah, totally. But I don't know if I'd go or anything. No, I mean, like to go, to go commercially um, would take a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd have Absolutely. to send special units first to like of course. Form. Yeah, the thing is, they have to send. Um, this is all like, um, what's the word like, presumptuous or like he wants to do it by twenty twenty two is to send like two um, people. No, 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 no. Oh, people, like, not not people first. Uh, mission, supply bro. supply missions first. Oh, just to send it there and leave. Send it, it there, leave it. Cool. Then the next, then in twenty every two years, we are in line with Mars. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So we're like closest in the perfect alignment oh. that they need. Yeah. So yeah. So 2022, I think it was, and two supply missions. And 2024, we would do four missions, two supply, and two people. Wow. So that those supply things, they would be able to build and refuel the rockets that are there, and come back home. Damn. But Damn this is like know. 2024, 2022. It's like. It seems very early, um, and normally Elon Musk always does predict things, Super but early. sometimes it doesn't work out. But like that's the idea. If everything is working out correctly, this is what he wants by that time, by this time, like in twenty twenty two. Oh, in, in an idealistic years. scenario. Yeah, yeah. Because some things happen. Sometimes some things doesn't work out, or other yeah, things. Totally, so totally. It like, yeah, totally. Makes sense. Yeah, it just can't always won't always work out. But yeah, but like it, that's the idea. I mean, to even have that kind of thing, to set a timeline, I think that's also good too, right? Yeah, but all businesses do that, right? No, like, I know that's what I'm saying. Long term yeah. objectives, it's like yeah. yeah, that's just a standard business practice. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah, but in the meantime, they're also still like making the money or putting the satellites up there or like doing these like, other missions for SpaceX, right? That are oh, generating the money. For what them. was that other thing that he's like? So, all right, flying cars. He's like, we'd never have flying cars because like, how would you? Well, one, how would you regulate it? And two, like the sound. Yeah. But like he was saying, what we could do is we could go underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, underground. Yeah, he has multiple. Oh, uh, yeah. There's another. That's another one too. Like right? the boring company. Yeah. That has the idea to make um, uh, like fast travel, like Hyperloop, and there's all these sort yeah, of yeah. See, there you go. Like ideas of yeah. Like dang, bro. Look at that, man. We should just give him all of our money and like, please, <laughs> to please, Tony. But he's, I think they did with SpaceX with the, like, less amount of money they've done so much. Right, yeah, yeah totally, totally. He's like a, he's like a real-life Tony Stark, man. <laughs> well, he was in Iron Man. Yeah, true, true, he was, he was. Yeah. <laughs> I, I Which is funny. Yeah, we're in for, like, a really interesting future. It's, it's weird when you think about, like, how much um, ingenuity there is and, like, how much there was in the past and how much we have to look forward to mm -hmm. it really makes your life small right in perspective because mm -hmm. it's like we're just on this thing that's being propelled forward by a bunch of forces that we don't really control but we can contribute to mm -hmm. you know so yeah. like but that's for everyone right like elon musk can't control everything but he can contribute to something yeah you know all you're doing is you're like tipping the scales one way or another yeah. you know yeah. but even on the grander scheme of things it's like it was already gonna tip that way anyways mm -hmm. if you look at it mathematically right i think he would think of it the same way <laughs> yeah so it's like a, a lot of philosophers like believe in fate right because of like mathematics because it's just like you're you're just being propelled forward by yeah cause and effect yeah 
Right? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, just, just a side note, but did you know that there's, um, I don't know if it's Muslim, but it's something in like the hood. Like, uh, oh, what's the name? Riza was talking about it. Mm-hmm. So there's like a branch of philosophy or religion called mathematics. Mm-hmm. So you had to know like numerology and stuff. Like that was their religion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, mm-hmm. And like that makes a lot of sense. Like why are we not all looking at it mathematically? It, you, uh, numerology is a bit different though. Or like what, what he called it mathematics. So like. So maybe like that. Yeah. But that would be more like the science people of the time. But it's, it's not science. It's a religion. Like they had to. It was like a. I don't want to say cult. But it was like a. It's like a religious body. Mm-hmm. Like there was like you had to know all these math things and like it's sort of like the Quran. You had to be able to recite these mathematical things, right? And it's like big I mean, in the hood. Yeah, I think it just seems like as like a a field of people that were doing science, but it's just yeah, totally. Like, but now they turn into like yeah, a like we can thing, yeah. we can even say like some of these I should look scientists that, are more actually. like religious, like yeah, they are. So like that's what I'm saying. Like maybe it's something like that. At that time, <laughs> right, 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 right. Actually, it, yeah, I don't know enough about it, so I should really look more into it. Right, but it seems really, uh, it seems like a, a logical, like a logical viewpoint. Because mm. our world is really run by math, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and, right. It is right, and they say like math is the language of the gods, not in terms of like. It's the universal language as well, right? Because like we can all describe things mathematically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. All right. So, Elon, you are a supreme being. They would call him a supreme being, right? It'd be like, a, <laughs> I guess, yeah. right? If this was like ancient religion times, they'd be like, he is a, he is a prophet, or a god. <laughs> right? Yeah, it, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You would create stories of like he was able to see the world. He was speaking to God, <laughs> which gave him the knowledge of how to create these amazing right. spaceship structures. Yeah. And he was ridiculed because nobody believed that he spoke directly to God. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's totally you could totally turn him into a religious leader. Yeah. Not true. Yeah. All right, so cool. uh, so give your money to SpaceX, and don't forget to pick up some teas on uh, zenrealclothingco.com. Yeah. SG Podcast for 20% off select items. Till next time. Peace. Happy travels. Bye. Bye.